All right, so I mentioned in some other videos that I wanted to make sure we had a conversation that centered around some of Judge Joe Brown's commentary as it relates to the real reason why Americans are supporting illegal. I'm going to refer to them as illegals. I'm 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 not going to refer to them as immigrants. They're not actually going through the appropriate process for nationalization and truly respecting uh, who we are as Americans um, to participate in the American dream and be a part of that. So I'm, I'm not going to even refer to them as immigrants, but just the illegals who are coming across uh, the borders and doing everything within their power to disrupt our peace and to commandeer our homes as American citizens. Uh, so let's take a look. I have heard numerous theories about why the American government is providing so much support to immigrants while many Americans are homeless and housing insecure. Um, what do you think is fueling this mass movement of financial support for newly arrived immigrants in American cities? They're not immigrants, they are illegals. And what's going on is very simple. You have this situation set up by Article 1. Of See, we are already on the same page. We are, and if you don't know who Judge Joe Brown is, definitely go do your research. But this is definitely one of the elders, uh, especially in our community, and, and someone that we should definitely lean on. He's he's getting up in age at this point, and so you know we want to make sure that we value our elders accordingly, and and he is in, you know, a a symbol, and also uh, representing actionable change. And I, I truly appreciate, you know, everything that he's done to contribute uh, to our people being in a better position and representing us accordingly. And definitely go a uh, special shout out to I Never Knew TV. Of the U.S. Constitution, it says every 10 years there shall be a census conducted, the primary purpose of which is to determine the apportionment of representatives in the House of Representatives. We call them congressmen, in other words. So I participated in no less than five census takings as an adult. This last one in 2020 was the first one. They did not ask whether I was a citizen or not. Also, it's the first one where they did not inquire as to the status of my parents, what their status was. And so, you know, before we go forward, but that lets you know the setup. Uh, I, re I recall this started happening even when I was in the fifth grade. I noticed that when we would take standardized tests, there used to be a category for both uh, for simply just the sex that you were in terms of are you male or are you female? And then I noticed by the time I got to eighth grade that that changed from male or female and it went to gender. And so what's important about this is the, the process of conditioning and how words can be used to conflate other things. We, I mean, we've seen this happen time and time again, where one word will be used for one thing in one era, and over time, it becomes conditioned to be used for something else. I mean, even if you look at how the word gay was used in the 50s and the 60s, it was completely different than how now that has become a part of what is considered a sexual identity per se. And so just understanding the nature of that the history of words and how strategic individuals are in the deception. And again, this goes back to the concept of military warfare, that first rule being deception. I have to mislead. I have to disguise my true intentions until I have accomplished my purpose. And so when he says that now he's noticing that you're not even asking whether or not I am an American citizen, that truly speaks to how now this is about the population numbers. And so long as I have the numbers in my favor, I can maintain this office. And the fact that you all, the, you know, these political parties are willing to do this at our expense. It's absolutely, absolutely shocking.
See, heretofore, what went on is they said, these are the citizens, this is the population of the United States, and we have another category of people who are not citizens. This time, for 2020, they combined them. What's the purpose? Well, so California, Illinois, New York, New Jersey, et cetera, will not lose congressional representation and will perhaps gain representatives. In other words, if you build up the population of California, they maintain the current number of congressmen, or they might gain one or two, but the people that are being counted toward this gain or retention cannot vote. So there are what I call local yokels, New York and a few other places, California, places like San Francisco, where they have an Asian who is not a citizen who's sitting on, of all things, the election commission to determine uh, for San Francisco how the votes are counted and such like. There are locals that are trying to generate this thing. They also are trying to bring in people who are susceptible to a new agenda, which is to impose the rainbow cult on the country. It is a new religion. And in order to understand, we see that. I mean, we. I think we we've already did the video on Joe Biden and the Trans Visibility Day. That is the new religion. It is the new religion. It is being promoted to you for twenty four hours. You may go to church if you're a Christian. You may go to church for one to two hours out the week. You know, if you're Catholic. If you're Muslim, you may. So you you the hours they're promoting the propaganda so much so that they are, again, conditioning you over time. So uh, everything that Judge Joe Brown is saying is 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 on point here. It's religious nature. Contemplate Buddhism. Buddhism is an ancient and honorable religion, but it does not have a deity. No God. Same thing with LGBTQIA not homosexuality, but this cult that's represented by the rainbow. You cannot teach Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism in an American public school, but you can teach rainbow. Uh, kids get taken to Sunday school, the church by their mothers, and they sit through bored to tears for an hour or two hours uh, a few Sundays out of the month, and by the time they are six, seven, eight, nine, they are devout believers in whatever the religion happens. Literally, just said this. Literally, just said this. It's all. It's all about the timing. By the time you, it's. It's also the equivalent to wherever you're spending the, the majority of your time, you're going to be inadvertently influenced, and so this even leans into the time that you spend on social media. Like a lot of times people will um, unintentionally adopt certain characteristics or you call, they call it trending, right? I mean, even with the algorithm of trending where the algorithm is being influenced in a certain way uh, with means outside of your control per se, but now other people are catching on like wildfire and participating in these acts um, unbeknownst to them that have been programmed. And so you are participating in programmatic acts and engaging in activities and you're not really thinking about the long-term effects of that that every time i want you to jump you're jumping every time i want you to dance you're dancing every time i want you to do this you do it and before you know it you're being influenced and this is just the, this is how advertisement works you know one of those situations where you'll start you'll see an ad about a coca-cola uh, about popcorn or whatever and then the next thing you know it may be a couple of days it may be two days it may be three days all of a sudden you want coke all of a sudden you want popcorn and you think that this is just a natural impulse that this is just something that you naturally want when in reality you've been influenced to do this and so a lot of times people are not thinking about how impressionable or how they are uh, how their mindset is being shaped into what somebody else wants it to be, to be. this is not of god right this is not from God. This is not in any relation to God. And you are being manipulated and controlled by someone else entirely that does not have your best interest at heart. Let's keep going. Used to be whether they went to church, synagogue, or mosque, or temple. But what you have is the rainbow being imposed 
six hours a day, five days a week, preschool all the way through 12th grade. So they are indoctrinating people in this rainbow thing. And it is a system of philosophy that deals with nihilism. In other words, self-hate. You don't like what you are. You want to be something else. There are no standards, duty, honor, obligation, responsibility, accountability, purpose, cause, morality, ethics. All of that goes out of the window. And you get rid of those guiding principles that have controlled and directed humanity since we've been here, you get rid of shame and guilt. Oh my God, we have to get rid of shame. Somebody dealing with shame online. Oh my God. And you see, when you get this kind of thing, you get rid of the human control mechanism. Shame is good. Guilt is good. It causes people to behave. But we've got this cult that's attempting to put this in place. So what they're trying to do is recruit followers. And that's why politics looks so crazy today is because it's not about the ordinary things, which are what do you get for your vote? What kind of economic background or environment are you creating? What kind of thing about the options that a government will exercise? You're getting in place this thing where the primary element is destruction of masculinity, where it's anti-manhood, anti-womanhood, anti-childhood, anti-nuclear family and setting up something else. The prototype that you're getting in place to run this, you can see by what's going on down in Georgia right now. Fanny Willis is a classic example, the poster child for what's supposed to be imposed on us in terms of leadership. That's whether you're talking about Maxine Waters, Nancy Pelosi, whether you're talking about uh, Cory Booker, whether you're talking about Lori Lightfoot. Uh, this is what is to be put in place. It's not affirmative leadership. It's administration. So I'm going to chime in and give a little little context here. So nihilism, just making sure that everybody is following along with this. So nihilism is based centered around the concept of nothing at all. When you look at the word N-I-H-I-L, that means nothing at all. And so in philosophy, it, it, it means it's like an extreme form of skepticism. And so from a political lens, it means the rejection of fundamental social and political structures what does this mean this means that when we have a larger part of america that is promoting this idea of nihilism where you are rejecting the tradition you are rejecting the structure the question that is not being asked is what does that lead to next because so often um we don't realize how some of our acts are actually devolving or uh, taking away from the integrity of what is already in place. For example, when we have issues as it relates to what is considered patriarchy or, or, or matriarchy or what have you, we're, we're so focused on overthrowing something that we're not considering what will be left. What does that look like? If you have this issue with patriarchy, what does the absence of patriarchy look like? And is the method that you're choosing to use to eliminate this type of uh, quote unquote hegemony, is that, is that effective? Because if you're just left with matriarchy, what does that mean for everyone else? How does that affect everyone else? So, What's happening is that there's an absence, there's a gap in the critical thinking process because no one is considering all of these angles. It is simply a reactionary standpoint that this, this thing must be wrong, so this other thing must be right. While it's more so a nuance in the gray area, both things can be true. There are some things that this needs to be improved on, and this also needs to be improved on, and there's room for both, and this is how we can best accomplish that. And we need to do that over a period of time. So this is us thinking about the long term. So we're putting ourselves in a framework of the next 100 years. 
this is not happening. Your actions are being dictated and being told to you by TikTok. Your actions are being dictated and being told to you by Twitter. Your actions are being dictated and told to you by Instagram, by Facebook. And you don't realize it. And you think that you have this free thought. When literally there have, they have been multiple instances where just because somebody else will say something negative, here comes the bandwagon of other people saying the same exact thing. Why is that? misery loves company a lot of people are not comfortable or satisfied or content in their own life and they look for ways to project that onto others when you have a sickness a lot of times people aren't looking to get healed they're looking for others to be sick with them so that they can be sick together so that they don't necessarily have to be focused on the cure and so this leads to a lot of the issues that we have in our society when we're talking about the absence of shame and guilt the moment that you give some guidance or a, a critical perspective on something, it can automatically be skewed because of the sensitivity of the world that we're living in right now, where it appears as if now you are subjecting this person to a form of discrimination and that's not right and that shouldn't have happened and that should not be allowed. And it, and it only magnifies the issue. So. Again, we have to be conscious on the concept of nihilism, that it's the concept of nothingness, right? And, you know, clearly like, almost like the, the doctrine of negation. And when, when we're looking at our youth, for a lot of them, there's a lack of empathy. There, there's there's a lack of care. There's a lack of consideration. There is there is something that is being missed because they're not being led with love and instruction in that way. They're not getting the background on why they should subscribe to certain uh, certain ideologies, certain beliefs, certain codes, certain ethics, certain principles. They're not getting any of that from the older generations. That consists of us the you know the 30 and up we do have a responsibility uh we can't just look at the youth and treat them as this independent entity um not recognizing that they are like clay and with clay clay has to be molded it, it, it has to be shaped and that ha that's a process that happens over time and because we as parents or we as family members or we as leaders or as lawyers as doctors as engineers as teachers as community activists nonprofit leaders because we're not collectively directing the capital and the consciousness to teach our youth and most importantly to redirect the actions and behaviors of ourselves and our own self-accountability is leading to a devolvement over a period of time and you know where we are right now just as it relates to squatters and, and so many other issues we are on the decline we're on the decline so we, we really have to figure out uh number one you know where we're going to stand a uh, hundred years from now and i mean even if you you know you, you think about it, a lot of people they don't you know they don't even see America being around 100 years, but this this shouldn't be the mindset. The mindset is, OK, you don't see us being. But what are we going to be doing? What about your great grandchildren? What about your grandchildren? And this gets back to, again, the scripture, Proverbs 13, 22, your children's children. Why are you not thinking about children outside of yourself? A lot of this individualism is leading us down a path of nothingness, of nihilism that just Joe Brown just spoke on. Everybody is thinking about self and in thinking about self, you cannot have true wealth because wealth requires you to think about things that are outside of you individually and to think about what happens thereafter. So again, this has definitely been another episode. I want I'm, I'm glad that, you know, Judge O'Brien was able to give some more context. Notice that the states that he called out, California, New York, New Jersey, Chicago, these are all states that have had these squatter related issues magnified, um, almost encouraging migrants to move there. And we see what 
the apparent underhanded motive is votes control maintaining control and that's going to be a whole nother conversation but we'll tap into that as well let's 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 look at a couple more clips from judge o'brown and go from there 